why would we choose Flutter for building a game engine? Everyone is like, oh, but it has to be like Rust or C++ or, yeah, you know. Flutter is actually pretty perfect for game development. Like, you're never going to build a triple A game in Flame. But uh, for the vast majority of games out there, like small little casual apps uh, or some like RPGs where you run around in some dungeon and uh, like 2D or fake 3D. And uh, for this, Flutter is quite perfect because we have direct access to the graphical context of the platform. We have a high rendering performance in it and it's a mature ecosystem and of course, multi-platform. We're gonna go briefly go through the Flame game engine in this talk. There won't be that much code, so uh, the air in here isn't very good, so your brains just have to keep up with the simple stuff. So who am I? I'm uh, Lucas Klingsbo, and uh, I'm part of the Flame engine core team. And uh, usually if you've seen me online, I'm spied on, usually quite active around. Um, I used to work at DICE a long time ago, but not on their engine part. If you don't know DICE, they make like Battlefield and stuff like that. And part of the very feared conglomerate EA, which uh, are known for ruining games. <laughs> uh, I'm not a gamer. Most people uh, think that, oh, okay, you're building a game engine, you must game a lot. But uh, I don't game anything at all. I've, I find the, like, the the problems that we find in the, the game space is like that's kind of my game like I, I, i'm interested in solving those problems there are usually quite quite a lot of different problems that uh, are very interesting in uh, there and other than that i enjoy climbing and hiking and obviously programming and i build a lot of keyboards and you should all start building keyboards to be able to program until you're like 70 because all keyboards are terribly unergonomical. And I'm part of uh, an organization called Bluefire and we're an open source collective. And right now we're only uh, five core members, but we have lots and lots of contributors to the packages that we are uh, presenting. And we have Flutter and Dart packages. Uh, so you, if you look at the like top hundred of the of the pub packages, we have quite a few there. Uh, for example, Flame and Audio Players and something called Photo View and Forge Two D and uh, a lot of other ones. Uh, and Blue uh, Blue Fire is we're just doing this for fun and like completely without monetary incentive and yeah, just on our free time basically. And we have a big friendly community. So if you're interested in getting into uh, contributing to packages, uh, you should join our Discord, which there will be a link for later. So what we were actually here for today, we're going to talk about what is Flame. H how many in here have used Flame before? Not okay. One, two. How many people have heard about Flame before? Almost everyone. That's great. Uh, because it is the most popular game engine for Flutter, and I love to say this, but uh, we're pretty much the only game engine for Flutter too, so it's uh, not that much of an accomplishment. <laughs> uh, we have lots of stars on GitHub and 2,800 commits now and 700 forks and 150 contributors. And this is over the course of like four and a half years, I think now. So it has grown quite quickly and it has stabilized quite a lot too. And uh, GitHub has this new feature now that you can see how many people that uh, use your uh, package. And it's used by approximately 5,000 public repositories. And then obviously there are lots more private ones and people that don't even put their application on uh, GitHub. We released version 1.6 recently and uh, 1.7 is coming up with new juicy stuff so it's uh, very much in a live package it's always things happening and uh, flame is just another widget like you can put it anywhere 
in your widget tree. And we will talk a little bit more about that later. And so why would we choose Flutter for, uh, for building a game engine? Everyone is like, oh, but it has to be like Rust or C++ or, yeah, you know. And Flutter is actually pretty perfect for game development. Like, you're never going to build a AAA game in Flame, but uh, for uh, the most, vi uh, the vast majority of games out there aren't AAA games. They're like small little casual apps uh, or some like RPGs where you run around in some dungeon and uh, like 2D or fake 3D. And for this, Flutter is quite perfect because we have direct access to the graphical context of the platform, so we can do uh, very efficient rendering optimizations. And uh, we have a high rendering performance in it, which can be seen when you have uh, your Flutter apps itself. And this will be uh, improved a lot by Impeller too, if you have heard of that. And it's a mature ecosystem. There's a lot of things in there. And of course, multi-platform. It's like super great to be able to yes, build your game once, yes, push it out on all platforms. And it, it is like especially great for games because in games you don't tend to, you don't have to like really think about, uh, it doesn't have to have a native iOS look and feel on your game. Usually they just ship them looking the same with their little like gamey look and feel. So it's even easier to build a game than to build a normal Flutter app, I would say. And as I said, it's just another widget, so you don't have to just have a game in there. You can have, uh, like for example, in a, my uh, when I'm not building Flame, I'm building a bank app. Super boring, right? But uh, then you can sneak in a little Easter egg with a Flame game somewhere where the bank customers don't notice it. Or maybe you have a loading screen or something. Or maybe you want to do the... Uh, the little Chrome uh, dino jump thing when you don't have internet. Yeah, the, the possibilities are endless. You don't have to build a pure game to use Flame. And also you can use it just for animations because we have some pretty powerful animation stuff in here. And in Flame we have something similar to how this widget tree just looked like and that is called the component tree. Because in Flame it works almost the opposite of what uh, it does in Flutter. In Flame, we try to re-render as often as possible. So we will re-render 60 times per second or 120, depending on uh, what your hardware supports. And in the component tree, uh, you can imagine a component a little bit like uh, a widget that can have as many uh, children as they want. So like a row or a column or a stack or something. Uh, so any component can have as many uh, child components as you want to put in there, and then they will uh, stay connected, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. And even the flame game, which is in the root there, is a component. So you can put a flame game in a flame game if you'd like to. And one of the most common questions is like, okay, can I add a widget into the uh, component tree? And the simple answer is no, because a, a widget is uh, working completely different, but the longer answer is yes, because you can put it with something we, that we call the overlays API. So for example, if you want to build some like uh, HUD, something that stays on top of the game with some uh, buttons or statistics or uh, yeah, the things that Flutter is really great at building, like menus and uh, things like that, then you can use the overlays API and then this can put the widgets on top of the game or remove them. And uh, you usually use it for menus and such too. So this is kind of what the only thing you need to get started. Or you don't actually even need this if you don't want to have any assets or anything in your game. You have, you extend the flame game and you override the onload method. And in the onload method you will uh, load your assets that you're going to use, and you can add components uh, th that you want to show from the beginning. And then meanwhile, on load is running, you can have a loading screen running. We have that built into the game widget. And here you can see, instead of having a scaffold or a material thing here, you can, if you just want to build a flame game, 
then you can just put the game widget directly in game app here and run it directly. And then if you do that, you actually don't need to do any other Flutter code if you don't want to. You need to do all the rest in Flame. So one of our top contributors actually has never written a Flutter app until now when he started to uh, he's starting to build like this studio app that we have Flame. So he knows Flame super well, but he barely knows Flutter at all, which is like really surprising to me. And in Flame, we implement something called a game loop, and this exists in almost all game engines. And what it does, uh, since the rendering cycle of games are usually a m lot more uh, advanced than it is in normal apps, then you use this game loop. And what you do, first you go into update, and in update, you update the state of everything. And then after that is done, you render it. And then you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for 60 times per second. And, oh yes. And then obviously you can have some input with like interrupts this. Or not interrupts, but it can come in at any point. Uh, so this is what a component basically looks like. This is the core of everything. Uh, and here you just put your update logic, you override this method and put your update logic in here. And you override the render uh, and put, put it in there. But a lot of the components are already pre-built. So then you don't have to do anything of this. Then you just have to say that, oh, I want to show this animation and all the magic that is here is already done for you. And you might see the DT here. That stands for delta time. Uh, and that is the time from the last frame that was rendered. Uh, because otherwise, if it would uh, lag, for example, uh, you you want it to you don't want a user with a different uh, speed on their devices to be able to play the game differently. So you have to take DT into consideration when doing things. But a lot of the time, that is uh, already done for you in the uh, game engine. And uh, as I said, you can add any components to another component, and then they will. Uh, we're going to come to uh, one of the base components later that is called position component. And then they will like move together. So for example, imagine a player, then you might have uh, a sword component and then you just add the sword component there when you have uh, touched it or something. And then that sword would follow the player around. So you don't have to care, uh, care about uh, updating the sword, only the player. And then you can put on a lot of other things there. But uh, these ones that are pure components, they don't have a, uh, a position on the screen. Uh, so they can be, for example, a timer or something, or you have written your own rendering logic. And uh, a qu quite common thing when people uh, go into Flame is to do this. So I'm only going to show this briefly so you don't remember it, because you're not supposed to do this. So they call the update methods manually and render methods manually of uh, their components. But when you add your component, then you don't have to do that. It is all done by the engine and it makes sure that everything is called uh, in the proper order, etc. So this is the position component that I was talking about. So usually you want to place something on the screen and then you want it to have a position and it might have a size and you might want to scale it later and it might be a little bit angled. So those are the like four base, uh, basic types that the position component has. And then we have lots and lots of components uh, that extend this position component so that you don't have to write everything yourself. So for example, here we have a sprite component. It's you just uh, tell Flame that, oh, I want to render this sprite. Uh, and you put it in a sprite component. And you tell it what position it should have and how big it should be. And Flame just handles the rest. And uh, uh, just a sprite component is like doesn't feel very alive. It's not very interactive. And then a very common thing in uh, when you use this pixel art games is to use sprite sheets. So they can look something like this. 
and that you can turn into an animation with a sprite animation component. So then you just hand it one of those sprite sheets and you get one of these old school looking uh, players or enemies or whatever you want it to be. And we have lots and lots of different uh, components. So for example, if you're not very old school that you want to use some like new cool animations for your components instead, then I can really recommend Rive. If you haven't looked into that, it's really powerful to do cool animations. And uh, this is our longest <laughs> component name, I think, Sprite Animation Group Component. And that means that you can have several animations in there and they can have several states. So you can tell it, for example, okay, now you're walking, then you should run this animation, or now you're fighting, then you should run this animation. So it's, it has a way too long name, but we couldn't come up with anything shorter, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, Flame is very modular. We have a, a, a something called bridge packages. A lot of them are inside of our mono repository. Uh, so for example, we have, a, we have also built this uh, box 2D port called Forge 2D. And if you want to use uh, uh, a physics engine, then you just uh, use Flame Forge 2D together with Flame. And then if you want uh, sound, for example, you can use Flame Audio. Or if you want to use Rive, as I just mentioned, you use Flame Rive. So we have the core package that is just called Flame. And you can like just build a game with that. That's no problem. But then we have these extensions that we call bridge packages that make it a little bit more powerful. And Flame Tiled, for example, Tiled is an editor to build uh, uh, games out of tiles, <laughs> I guess. And we have some other features too that I haven't mentioned, which is a camera and a viewport, for example. So you can have a fixed size viewport so it doesn't look different. Or you can have you can have any crazy viewport you want, if you want a round viewport or yeah. And a camera that you can move around in your world. And the collision detection, of course, if you're not using uh, the physics engine, then you can use our built-in collision detection, which is quite powerful. And then, then you will have to decide yourself what happens when different hitboxes uh, intersect or collide. And effects is this thing I talked about in the beginning that makes it very powerful for animations. So you can say like, okay, I want uh, this player to walk around in a circle and then jump uh, and it should follow this kind of curve and then you can build quite cool things there and there are, there are effects for a lot of different things. And of course we have gesture and input handling so that uh, if you want to say that okay this uh, you should be able to tap these coins then you just add a mix in on that component and all of a sudden you have a, a, a callback that you can handle the input, or you can have it directly on the game, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and uh, optimization method that is called sprite batching, which uh, makes it a little bit more uh, efficient to, to render. If you want to render like a thousand different uh, particles, for example, you might want to batch them in one call to the GPU, and that we have built into. And the fix physics engine I already talked about, and uh, if you ever uh, run into bugs or anything, which we all do all the time, of course, then you can just write debug mode true in any component or in the game, and it will draw out uh, rectangles and things on the screen where it thinks that uh, things should be, and then you can usually figure out what you have done wrong. So that one is quite powerful. And uh, yeah, so now it, this part is easier to just show in a browser, like how do I get started, where where do I go in? Because if I just send you links here, you won't uh, remember to how to use it. So first of all, you can just check out our terrible site, which uh, is built in Flutter, because we were so keen on Flutter web in the beginning. But I, c I have a recommendation that is don't build normal sites in Flutter, <laughs> only build web apps in Flutter. So we're actually rebuilding this now. And uh, in here you can find our docs and uh, examples and I can really recommend to join our Discord. So we have quite extensive docs, which are, it's very small, but yeah. Go in here and check, out, check it out yourselves and 
where you can start is the tutorials. So here we have a few different tutorials that you can start with. And there's also lots of tutorials on YouTube. The, like, the community has been amazing at producing content. And Flutter too. Like now in uh, 17 days of Flutter, they had a whole week of just flame content, which was pretty amazing for us. Uh, and then another thing that is quite powerful is our examples page. And in here we have examples of a few games and we also have examples of pretty much all features that we have in Flame. So say that you want to like look at how you do, uh, I don't know, a move effect maybe. Then you can go in here and look at that and then you have the code up here and you get directly to GitHub and can check how to how to implement that. And you have some descriptions and stuff here too. Um, right, let's get back to the slides. Yes, and when you get stuck, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, when, when I started with Flame a long time ago, when it was not very mature, then I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't ask too much for help. But if you ask for help in a public forum, like everyone around you learns too. And, and we are very happy to answer your questions and the rest of the community is too. Like there are thousands of people on our Discord now and you can also use the, uh, the flame tag on Stack Overflow and then your question is usually answered within a day or two. And I think that QR code goes to our Discord if anyone is keen to join. Uh, yeah, and if you find bugs and stuff and you don't want to you join the Discord, uh, you can write a GitHub issue, or if you have problems. And uh, this is some examples of Flame games that have been built. I just pulled this together very quickly yesterday after a lot of wine, so it's not very pretty. <laughs> uh, so here you have it, like, yeah, three different games that are released in the apps in the App Store. This one even exists on uh, uh, on Steam, which is pretty cool that they managed to get uh, a Flutter app in Steam, and it has it's very big. You can play all kinds of strange uh, chess setups. Um, and I, I think I had some. Oh no, Th that's the typical thing, right? The video isn't loading when you have a presentation. And that one isn't loading either. Well, you can imagine some very pretty games <laughs> with videos there. Um, right. Any questions?